Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna talk about my time at UC Berkeley and why getting a 4.0 might not be as desirable as you may have thought. A little bit about me, I'm currently a Yale medical student studying to become a physician, but for undergrad, I went to UC Berkeley. And UC Berkeley, if you're not aware, it's a really difficult college to get good grades in. A lot of people complain about the grade deflation there. It's just really hard to get A's because everything is graded on a curve. And with so many good students at UC Berkeley, in order to be in the top 10, 15% and get that straight A, it's extremely difficult. And to get a 4.0, you can't even have any A minuses, right? It's really difficult to get great grades at UC Berkeley, particularly in the sciences. So how was I able to do it? If you're interested in that, you can check out the rest of my channel. I'm not really gonna talk about that in this video, but I have tons of advice and tips and tricks to help you, um, you know, do better in school. So check that out if you're interested. But in today's video, I really wanna focus on why it was so stressful and terrible, honestly. If you're interested in getting a 4.0 at UC Berkeley, you really have to give most of your social life and hobbies up. And at least that was the case for me, unless you're extraordinarily talented, you really don't have time like you would otherwise. For example, in high school, I had a lot of time to do things. Like I would run around, going to the park, playing basketball, hanging out with friends, just wasting tons of time doing random things. And in Berkeley, my mindset completely shifted. Whenever I would think, or whenever somebody would invite me to do something, my mind would immediately calculate, okay, going there takes 30 minutes, coming back takes 30 minutes, hanging out would take like three hours. And I don't even have the hour to spare in order to travel to and from that place. That's my break. My break would be like a YouTube video or eating or something like that. I very rarely had the luxury to spend several hours doing something other than studying. It really was smaller breaks. And parties and stuff like that during the weekend, that was never even in consideration for me. Um, even like my nephew's birthday party, I'm sorry, um, my relatives might have hated me, but I just didn't have the time to go to those. And also you just become less engaged with the world around you. There are so many things going on in the 21st century that we have access to now, especially with transportation, with the internet, there are so many things going on and I felt like I wasn't keeping up with any of that. I was really just narrow-minded and focusing on school and my priorities at hand, which was good in one sense in that I did well focusing just on those, but in the other sense, I felt like I was missing out on a lot of opportunities and a lot of growth, honestly, because I was just strictly focusing on this narrow part of life. Also, I think to a certain extent, it becomes a waste of time. Memorizing so many trivial details and learning about classes that I'm not even using at all in medical school and probably will never use in the future, like the amount of math I learned, the amount of calculus that really isn't that relevant to what I'm going to be doing or ever doing. Um, same thing with physics and tons of other classes that might have been required by my college, required by my major, etc. but really I don't care about and I'm never going to use and I spent way too much time reading the textbooks for those classes, memorizing details for a teacher that, um, you know, prioritized the most random shit, to be honest. And at Berkeley, just so you know, the exams have a lot of random shit. I will say for certain classes, my time was well spent, and I think there's certain classes in college that everyone should take, like psychology, for instance, I learned so much and there's just a lot of practical application that will benefit me in life. But for the majority of my classes, I can't say the same. So it really was a waste of time. And I'm sure a lot of people who've gotten good grades can tell you about the amount of stress, the amount of work put in, the amount of time wasted, and all that stuff. I would like to talk about a couple of lesser known things. Getting a 4.0 at UC Berkeley, I think people's perceptions of you change and you really are stereotyped a lot. I think people automatically assume you have no personality. People automatically assume you're a complete nerd, that you don't do anything else, that you don't play sports, etc., etc. Um, I think people really put you in this box, which 
honestly is really annoying and really stereotypical. I think most people would agree by now that stereotypes can be really harmful, but for some reason this stereotype of a 4.0 nerd um, has been propagated everywhere and nobody really has a problem with it. There's been people that have straight up hated me uh, because of the grades I get, which sounds extremely silly, extremely dumb, but it is the truth and I'm not sure where this comes from, but some people will hate you and a lot of people will stereotype you if you get a 4.0 and that's really just the reality of it. And people's interactions with you, they gravitate more towards academics. When you're being introduced, for instance, you might just be introduced by your academic accomplishments or you know when you're conversing with someone it immediately goes towards academics and stays there um, just smaller things like that but uh, those do add up when over and over again you're characterized in this certain way and people you see that people put you in this little box I think people just have higher expectations of you and failure just hits that much harder for people who have been doing well for a period of time, I think there's almost an expectation that they're going to do that well forever. The natural course of a normal human, the failures, the successes, the ups and downs, that doesn't really apply to you for some reason. You're seen almost as a robot that's naturally gifted, that's going to be doing well forever. There's nothing that can bring you down. So was it worth it to get that 4.0 at UC Berkeley? I think a lot of people would say you wouldn't have gotten into a great medical school if you didn't have that 4.0. And that might be true, but on the other side, something that I think nobody talks about is that if you do have a really high GPA, a lot of schools will immediately exclude you from consideration. Whether a school knows that they're doing that or not, my personal experience, the large majority of my interviews were from top schools. Maybe it would have been more beneficial to have that 3.8 or 3.9 or whatever in order to get more interviews and in order to avoid the stereotype of being a 4.0 nerd or whatever. I don't know how the system works, whether people are doing that due to bias or people have a system where past a certain GPA they don't accept you. I really don't know the system, but I'm telling you from my experience, I wouldn't say it was 100% a good thing to have a 4.0. 4.0 when applying to medical school. So in the end, was it worth it to get that 4.0 at UC Berkeley? I really don't know. There are tons of negatives like I told you in this video. Um, I'm not even sure if it was helpful for my medical school uh, process. I, that's up in the air. And I think if I took it a little easier and relaxed and allowed myself to get a couple of B's and be in that 3.7 to 3.9 GPA range, that might have been probably optimal, honestly. I would have been fine for medical school. It might have even helped, who knows. And it definitely would have been better for my health and my sanity. And I would have had more time to focus on other things. So overall, it might have been better to relax a little bit. So if you're in that 3.7 to 3.9 GPA range, you're probably in a pretty healthy spot, um, especially if you're applying to medical school. If you're in another field, um, you're probably fine. The amount of work it takes to get from a 3.8 to a 4.0 is exponentially larger. And if we're looking, if I was to graph it and you have like your 2.0 here, the amount of extra work it takes to get from like a 3.8 to a 4.0, there's a huge gap. So was all of that extra work worth it for 0.2 more GPA? Probably not. And for those of you who are going into college and you want to do really well, it's okay not to get that 4.0, but on the other hand, if that's what you're going for, just realize the amount of things you're missing out on by doing that. Anyways, that's going to be it for this video. And like I said, if you're interested in the tips and tricks to do better at school, check out my other videos. Until next time.